Um, thanks very much. I've not actually been to the, the event before, so this is really quite exciting for me and possibly a bit silly, I guess, thinking about it that way. Um, I'd like to give a, a small talk called Walk This Way. And I'm going to start with a story that maybe a lot of people in the room have already heard before, but it's only the introduction, so don't worry, I'm not going to um, bore you, so if I can have your patience, if you have. But it starts with the university who are building a new building on an old campus. So they've got all these old traditional buildings there, and they've got this brand new spanking, kind of very metallic looking one. Um, and everything's going really, really well, and they're almost at that point where the, the campus is ready to take students, and they're putting the lines in the car park and all that kind of stuff. But there's one really noticeable issue. There's lots and lots and lots of grass, and there's no paths. So the dean gets the architect and says, what's going on? This is, you know, getting to the point where we really need to start admitting students, and we, we've got nowhere for them to follow. And the architect's like, just leave it with me, it'll be fine, it'll be fine. And they, they take some students in, they do a bit of a soft launch. So the students and the staff are making their way between campus buildings. And they're starting to complain because they're getting a bit muddy and then the carpet's getting a bit dirty. So the janitors are complaining. And it all makes its way back up to the dean. And the dean pulls the architect back in and gets him into the office and says, right, you said you deal with this, come on, what's, what's going on? And the architect takes the dean to the window and makes him look out and says, look at the grass, now we know where we're going to put paths. So that's a kind of, I heard it a few times, and I've, I've really, it resonated with me, but also because, next picture, this really resonates with me. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been a, a kind of designer, um, and latterly a user experience, or user researcher for about the last 10 years. And the, the design path is what I did. I used to decide how users would make their way through transactions, through applications, through websites, and I used my gut feel, and I used best practice, and I tried to, you know, base it on experience. Last time we did this, this was what happened. But the reality was, the other track was actually what happened in real life. People did things that we didn't predict, things weren't successful, and sometimes it really all went, went a bit wrong. So we in the UK call them shortcuts. That's pretty much the, the kind of vernacular we've got. In America, they're also known as desire paths, which I thought was a bit cheesy the first time I heard it. But it's actually quite, accurate because it's what people would do if they had a choice and something died text at work oh. <laughs> um, yeah it's what people would actually rather do so i use this one when we're talking to security teams quite a lot they um they don't like it so much but it makes a purpose so if we could visually understand or see what our users actually did on websites and systems, we would make the changes the way that um, some of the, the kind of the architects suggested back to the, the, um, the dean of the university, right? We wouldn't wait for it all to go a bit wrong or to have the, the kind of side paths before we actually actioned any differences. <coughs> so having heard the story about the university a few times, most good stories are actually based on truth. And I kind of looked into it because there must be an underlying concept there that, that people were basing that analogy on. And it turns out that about three or four universities in America did actually take that approach. They didn't put pavements in for the first year that they were open. Um, Berkeley, UCL, and that's Michigan State University in a view from one of their upper windows. And some universities actually let their architecture students design the paths in their first year. So they look at the desire paths that exist, the trodden ones that people have made, and they, they try to extract some data from them. So the wider the path is, the more people use it, and the deeper the path is, the more often it's used. And apparently it only takes about 12 uses for you to start to see a bit of a, a trend and a tread. So in the back corner there, you can see that there's been a little shortcut path made, and there's maybe across the middle, one starting to form. Kind of felt a bit like they were extracting analytical kind of data from it. They were starting to, to build up a bit of a picture. So this is what the same university looks like from the sky. It's got a crazy organic campus that doesn't really have a, a kind of concept of having a design behind it. So the, the buildings are all where they are, but in terms of the paths, they've evolved. And it kind of bears, it's nothing that a, an architect would have sat down and designed. And another view of the same one, it starts to look a bit more like uh, an event flow um, funnel in a, an analytics diagram, right? There's, there's just a lot of kind of organicness to it. And it's got that kind of form follows function spirit that 
it just works. Nobody would have designed it to look like that, but that has met the user's need. They can also make their, their users happy. So this is a tweet from Williams College when they filled in one of the kind of trod and shortcuts. And I really like the quote at the end, the guy saying, ain't gonna mess up my shoes no more. Um, they were able to give a little bit of delight back to their users. So that's kind of really the, the point of my talk. If we had the opportunity um, to make our online experiences better and even delightful, I guess we can't see the shortcuts that people have taken on our systems very easily, but we can look at the analytical data, we can see error log files, and we could do a bit of upfront research using prototypes to actually watch what people do. So it's nice asking them and everything, what would you do, but it's much, much better seeing what they would do in reality. And when we've got the evidence, then we've got the ability to make the change. The other kind of bonus is that our mistakes aren't public. So next time you see one of those kind of trodden paths and you think about the poor time planner in your local council that can, you know, he's got his mistakes aired out in public, just take for a little bit of comfort in the fact that nobody actually gets to see yours. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.